virtual data center. This is the view I have as a end user customer. And you can see that um, you don't just have to have one virtual data center, you can have more than one. And really at the end of the day, what a virtual data center is, is a pool of computing resources. So in the case of Virtual Data Center 2, I've got a fairly small one. It's got 10 gigahertz of CPU, 20 gigs of RAM, and 250 gigs of storage. Once you go inside of your Virtual Data Center, you can see that I have a, about, about six virtual applications that are running inside my data center. Uh, the majority of them are stopped, and my Exchange environment is up and running. And each, each virtual application has a number of C, uh, virtual machines, processing, memory, and storage. So as we explained before, the ability to mix and match and recast these on the fly uh, is a pretty powerful component to the solution. If I go into my QA environment, because I know that my uh, database server, I want to do some load testing, so I want to go ahead and increase the amount of resources that it has, I can go into the database server, the settings, go over to the hardware tab, take it up to, go ahead and give it eight processors, and we'll double the memory. And I'm also going to try and see if it makes any difference if I move my transaction logs onto another disk. So I'll add a um, another disk drive, go and give that 128 gigs of storage. OK. Yep, looks like my virtual data center is too small, so I'll need to get that upgraded. But basically, once I make those changes, as soon as I power the database server back on, it'll have all those new resources. I can run my testing, power it off, come back in, and shrink it back down to normal size, all within the self service portal. One of the other powerful capabilities within the virtual data center is the concept of catalogs. So as your service provider, BlueLock provides a list of VMs and vApps that you can deploy from out of our catalog. So if you just need to spin up 10, 20, or 50 Windows 2008 servers very quickly, run some testing, and then power them off, it probably doesn't make sense to configure a custom template. You just need to use ours, get your software loaded, do your test, and then delete them. But if you wanted to take a template that you had in your own VMware environment today. For example, I've uploaded uh, the BlueLock standard Windows 2008 server with IIS configured, Oracle already configured SharePoint and SQL Server. Those are my standards for my company so that every virtual machine or vApp I deploy already has my backup agent, my antivirus agent, and my monitoring agent already built in. One of the more powerful things that you can do is upload workloads. So when we showed the graphic about being able to move workloads between public and private cloud, this is the capability we were referring to. So if I had a, a workload uh, locally in my own VMware environment, or in this case on my desktop, I've already made a copy of a running Oracle database server that I had in my uh, private data center and I've got it sitting on my desktop here. It could also be on a share drive on your network. Just browse over to it. I pick the Oracle database. It's already built into the uh, vApp. Call it Windows 2008 R264 Oracle 11G. I can pick which data center I want to upload it into, and then it becomes a template. So if that became the standard template for all my Oracle deployments, I could leave it in the catalog. If that was a running application, which it is in this case, I've got all of my data and everything at that point in time in which I made a copy of it. I can then move it from my catalog into a production environment and deploy it as a working VM and then just remove it from the catalog. It's very easy. Uh, the same thing applies in reverse. If you wanted to go into your environment and download something, 
you could basically take a running workload that you had in your virtual data center, decide that you need to move it, or you move, move a copy of it back into your existing VMware environment. You just click on the download key, it comes across the same way the upload works, and then you would uh, move it in as an OVF into your existing VMware environment. As we've, uh, we've been running this application for probably six months, and as we have gotten more customers into the environment, one of the pieces of feedback we continued to receive was some interest in managing your public cloud environment with Virtual Center. So as a, a VMware customer, you probably already have staff that are trained and very comfortable with the Virtual Center interface, and they want a single pane of glass. So we worked with VMware on an application called Cloud Connector, and as you can see, if you go into your existing vSphere client after installing the Cloud Connector, you have an icon for your public cloud. You log in, and now within Virtual Center, you're able to manage the exact same virtual data centers that you saw inside the virtual data center interface. So all the, the vApps that I had, the virtual machines, the ability to stop, start, pause, suspend, etc. are all there, as well as you're able to access your public and your private catalog. So you can do machine deployments in there. So once you get your virtual data center up and running, if it makes more sense to include that as part of your virtual center environment and not manage it through the web interface, you add, the, you add this connector and you're good to go.